Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 1000 Series PLC PID instruction. Now detailed information contained in this video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been provided in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will also be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen here, um, the first thing we'll do is we're going to be controlling a cup of water with an immersion heater. So if we look at our CPU setup, we look at the hardware and you see we have included a thermocouple input card that has four points to it. And once we get to look at the hardware configuration, we can double click on the actual card itself. And you can see here, we'll be using input point number one. So there's my user tag, it automatically defaults to that. And we're gonna be using temperature degree C. So that's about it for setting up the card. Now once we have our card set up, then everything we're going to be doing is actually um, using the uh, relay output from our uh, PLC, which is located right here. And that relay output will be um, oscillating on and off based on the output of our PID. So this is going to be time proportional control for that relay. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at a PID instruction. And over on the left hand side here, you'll see a PID loop under the PID instruction. When we double click on that, um, the first thing we'll do is actually add a structure. And we'll just call this PID1. And what you'll see is once I re remove the structure, my name appears. What this does is it will set up all my parameters so I don't have, do not have to set that up again. So then we have our, our process variable and then our process, uh, process variable, which is our input to our PID instruction. So I'm just going to cancel that so we can call up our actual PID that we've programmed. And you can see here that my process variable that I have is actually my thermocouple input that I have. And then I have my PID set point and then my output. And then I have my input range max and mins, my output range max and mins. Uh, upper and lower limits, etc. And then we have our PID gain. And right now they're located or they're, they're in unit, units of seconds. I look at my major axis and I have my sample rates. I have my uh, deviation bias terms. There's a bunch of different parameters there for some of the advanced features that this uh, unit will do. And we have our major alarms. So these are alarms based on the conditions of our operating. Uh, parameters. Let's say cancel on that one. So we have it all set up and then here's my uh, time proportional control here. So what I'm doing is taking the output of my uh, process here which is my PID1 output and what I'm doing is setting up a simple timer set the present value of that timer is 200 uh, which it represents uh, two seconds so I'm gonna be oscillating my control period for two seconds and you see here that um, then I do my scaling factor now my scaling factor is based on my PID uh, one output so which is my PID output here so the minimum of that of that input is going to be zero and the maximum is going to be uh, 65,535 which is the 16-bit uh, resolution that we can get on the PID. Then my output is going to be my time proportional and that's going to be set a range between 0 and 200 representing the time that that output should be on for. Then what we do is we say not done then we set up our simple another timer is timer two, which represents the amount of time that it will be on for. And then we, as long as we have switch one on, which enables our PID, and we don't have, we do not have switch two done, and our PID one is not at zero, our output, then we will energize that relay for that time duration. So we hit monitor, we see that we're currently running, and you see that we have our our loop, 
Our current set point is 85. Our process value is 83.84. And you can see how there's my output right now and my output variable changes as we go along. So if I look at the database, once we have our PID instruction made, look at our tag database, and we'll look under our PID loop. Now under the PID loop, our set point, we need that, and we need our process variable, and we need our input range max and input range min. Now these min and max are gonna be set to 0, 100, representing my um, zero celsius to 100 celsius then what i have is my uh, gain my reset and my rate which is my p i and d and what i've done is i've changed them to float floating point 32 bit that means that my variables when they get auto-tuned can now be a decimal point which is very important and it seems to be a better control and then I have my output, which is uh, which is going to be integer 32. Then I have uh, output range max and min, which again I set for my zero to 65,535. And then I have my output uh, upper limit and lower limit, which must be also set from zero to 65,535. Our sample rate is set for 500 which represents 500 milliseconds which is two times a second that I've asked this to um, do the calculation for my PID and then my loop offset and then I've, I've kept some of these as memory attentive so that when the power goes off whatever they last were remains that way so that's my uh, tag database now the easiest thing about the um, Proactivity Suite and the PID loop is that when I look at my monitoring of the unit. So, but let's first look at the actual hardware that we have here. So, here's my uh, Proactivity 1000, and you see I have my I'm connected through my Ethernet port here. Then we have our thermocouple, which is connected with my thermocouple input, which is located uh, right down in here. And you can see that's in the uh, cup of uh, water right now. Then we have our immersion heater, which is actually connected um, to 120 volt uh, supply. And we're using the first relay here to trigger or to turn on and off that um, heater. And that heater, actually the output has been um, spliced into one of the ends of the cord connecting in there connecting into the wall socket in order to uh, provide that on off action that I'm looking for. So that's my basic setup of, of my uh, unit. So if we call up under the tools, you will see PID tuning. And we have our water heater, which we, was what we called. And you can see how what we're doing is um, there's our set point at 85 and this is how it's controlling right now and then what we can do is take a look at my auto tuning settings you'll see that it's set right now for PI let's put up PID and then we can set the initial P, uh, present value bump what this will do is actually bump up that set point and it will take whatever the thermocouple reads at the time as the set point value and it will then start doing calculations for my auto tune. And then notice here that must be in manual mode. So let's just move that aside for now. And input one is enabled, switch two is the auto manual. Currently right now it's an auto. So what we'll do is turn switch number two off. When switch two goes off, now we are in um, our manual mode and we can start our tuning parameters. So we'll leave that as 5%. So what we'll do is just hit start. And what you'll see is now we have the running condition. You'll also see that my um, set point was set for 85. 
so that means we're going to be going 85 degrees um, plus my 5% which will be up to about 89.25 degrees before it will actually turn off so you can see my temperature now climbing and my actual physical relay is currently on all the time so it's got full power and we're heating up that water and my output here you can see it's on all the time 100 percent so these graphs really indicate exactly what's happening right now we can actually read down here we're at 88.89 and climbing. Okay, we've hit our hit our 89.25 and now the output has now dropped off. Now what we're doing is waiting for it to come back down again. So what we're doing is cycling through as it's doing the calculation in order to um, lock in those PID parameters for the auto tune. And depending on your system, you can change these uh, bump values to whatever you like. So anywhere from 1 to notice that my response is, is relatively quick for a PID loop or using water and a heater. You see we're actually dropping below or pretty close to uh, below the 85. And you see my output there. Now it comes on for a quick bit and then turns off again and back on. So it's going to try to complete um, a few cycles before it actually uh, comes up and it'll say complete for my tuning. And now we are complete for our PID tuning. Our parameters have now been set. This is what they are right here. So we can uh, now, we'll just move that aside and we'll turn on our automatic again. And what we'll do is let's um, take a look at that. So right now we're controlling it to 85. And we'll see our, our output relay oscillating on and off to control the temperature of our glass of the water. If we now were to bump that set point, we'll look at the data monitor, data view, and we'll take the set point and let's go up to uh, 88 degrees. We'll write that in. And now what we'll do is take a look at the response of our loop to get to 88. You can see my heater's kicking in right now, warming up the, the water. You can see my present value now rising to my set point. see how my output is actually oscillating a little bit to, to try to maintain that temperature and uh, with minimal overshoot.
So we've actually hit our target. We're actually about 88.7 right now. So it looks like we, we've kept within the at one degree tolerance uh, for that shooting. And that's initial overshoot and then what you'll see is now it'll settle back down and we'll get right to our target of our 88. And what you'll notice is there we have some noise on the line and that noise is these speed spikes that you see here in my thermocouple. What we could do is filter those out a little bit and make it a little cleaner for the PID input. But this gives you a general over, over or a good idea of what actually we're setting when we're looking at PID and PID loops uh, within the Proactivity 1000 series. Now if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want to get our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click that bell beside your subscription and that really is what sends your notification to you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.